Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about the esophageal diverticulum. You already know diverticulum means what? Diverticulum, it's like a pouch. Okay, there's a pouch like formation. Now, what are the different types of esophageal diverticulum that we will discuss? The first esophageal diverticulum that I'm going to discuss here is called as a Zenkers diverticulum. Okay, Zenkers diverticulum. What are the important points which you need to know regarding the Zenkers diverticulum? The number one point is its example of false diverticulum. Okay, it's an example of false diverticulum or pseudo diverticulum. Now, why it is called as a false diverticulum or pseudo diverticulum? Why? See, first number one point is you can very well appreciate here there is like pouch like formation. There is this extra pouch that is happening. Okay. Now, anteriorly we are having the trachea. This is the trachea. Okay. Back to the trachea, what do we have? We have the esophagus. This is the normal, healthy esophagus, normal esophagus. But abnormally, back to this esophagus, there is a pouch forming from the pharynx, from the area of the pharynx, there is this pouch forming, this pouch here, it's called as a Zenkers diverticulum, it's an example of a false diverticulum, a pseudo diverticulum. Why we are calling it as a false diverticulum is because, now we all know that the esoph uh, esophagus are the entire GAT, okay, normally speaking, GAT is made up of how many layers? GAT have mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, as well as serosa, okay, there are four layers in the GAT. But in this diverticulum, you do not have all these four layers. All these four layers are not present in the diverticulum. Either one or two. Either mucosa or the submucosa. Okay, are present. Not all the four layers are present. As all the layers are not present, we are calling it as pseudo diverticulum. Okay, next, what else you should know? From where this diverticulum is originating? Is there is an area called as Killian's dehiscence. See, there is this area called as the Killian's dehiscence. From this Killian's dehiscence, this Zenkers diverticulum is originating. Now, if you ask me, where exactly is this Killian's dehiscence present? Look here. See, back to the trachea, we are having the uh, pharynx, right? Pharynx is there. Now, this pharyngeal muscle, which I am highlighting right now, okay, which I am putting these stripes, black color stripes, this pharyngeal muscle, it is called as the thyropharynges. Okay, this is called as the thyropharynges. Okay, now down to the thyropharynges, there is one more muscle which I am highlighting right now with the green color. See, this muscle, it is called as a cricopharynges. So, above there is thyropharynges, below there is cricopharynges. In between the thyropharynges and cricopharynges, there is a weak point present. There is a weak point. So, this weak point is called as a Killian's dehiscence. Okay, now you can see here, this area is called as a Killian's dehiscence. The weak area between the two uh, muscles, the superiorly there is thyropharynges and inferior there is cricopharynges. These are the inferior constrictor muscles. Both of these two muscles, thyropharynges and cricopharynges, they are coming under the inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles. So, there is a weak point between these two inferior pharyngeal con uh, con constrictor muscles. That area is called as the Killian's dehiscence, through which the pharyngeal pouch or the Zenkers diverticulum is arising. Okay. So, this pouch is originating from the pharyngeal region. So, that's why this is also called as, Zenkers diverticulum is also called as pharyngeal pouch. Okay. Done. Next, what else you should know regarding this Zenkers diverticulum? See, Zenkers diverticulum, it is going to be seen. Seen in males mainly. Okay, May, mainly male sex will be affected. The two older males. Okay, older age group is going to be affected. Now, what are the most common symptoms, if you ask me? The most common symptom, it is going to be dysphagia. Okay, dysphagia is going to be seen because of this pouch, abnormal pouch. It's very difficult for the person to swallow. Dysphagia will be seen. Not only that, the food particles, the food materials will go, some amount of food materials will go and store where? In this pouch. Now, some food particles is going to get lodged in this pharyngeal pouch and do you think proper digestion will happen over there? No, they will not digest, they will undergo rotting. Okay, they will undergo rotting because of that, the person whenever you talk with these fellows, there will be bad breath coming out, the foul breath that's going to come out because of the food is getting rotten in this pharyngeal pouches. So, there will be halitosis. Okay, there will be halitosis, that's a bad breath. Okay, next, what else you should know? See, these are the symptoms, dysphagia and halitosis, but what are the most common complications? 
See the complications are, see this food, uh, whatever is there, which is stored over there, it might get back, it might regurgitate back into the trachea. For example, if this, this patient is sleeping. Now while he is sleeping, this food, it might regurgitate back, it might go back into the trachea, it fall back into the trachea leading to the aspiration. So the most common complication is going to be aspiration. So aspiration can happen that can actually kill the patients. Aspiration or lung abscess can happen. Like you know this food can go into the trachea from there into the lungs and in the lungs infection will, de will develop leading to the lung abscess. Okay, lung Okay, lung abscess can develop. So these are the complications, right? Now, how to put the diagnosis? An old male is coming to you, a 60 year old male coming to you saying that he is having halitosis, uh, dysphagia, all these symptoms and you are thinking that this fellow might be having Zegers diverticulum, the false diverticulum. Now, the investigation of choice in this condition, okay, is going to be barium swallow. Barium swallow. So, if he is taking the barium swallow, first you have to, you have to uh, take the barium and you have to take an x-ray. Whenever you take the radiograph, see, you can very well appreciate here, this pouch, okay, this pouch here is the Zenker's diverticulum, the false diverticulum, okay. So, this is the image based question that will come in your exam. The investigation of choice is going to be the barium swallow. Now, what is the treatment? What we can do with these fellows is, see, here is the problem, right? Actually, there are two cavities. This is the normal esophageal cavity. Okay, which I am highlighting with the green color, that is a normal esophageal cavity. And back to it, what do we have? This is the abnormal cavity. Okay, there will be two cavities. So, what we can do is, we can remove this, okay, septum. Okay, we can actually remove this septum. So, the treatment or the surgery, what we can do here is called as the dolmens endoscopic. Stapling, okay, are the dolmen's endoscopic procedure, okay, so dolmen's endoscopic procedure is a surgery which can be done for this uh, false diverticulum, that is the Zenker's diverticulum. So these are some important points which I want you to know, okay, let me write here itself, the surgery in this condition is dolmen's, okay, endoscopy, dolmen's endoscopic surgery other procedure where we are going to take out that septum okay you can very clearly see here see there are two abnormal uh, lumens now this is the normal esophageal lumen now this is the abnormal lumen this is the diverticular lumen so the food is going to get stored over here so what we can do is we can remove this okay we can remove this whenever you remove that so food cannot store in that septum so there will be totally one cavity now now you can see here this is how it's going to be so these are the points which i want you to know regarding the zinker's diverticulum not only this here I want to add a few more important points. Look here, this is, imagine this is the esophagus. Okay. Now esophagus, we know it is divided into upper one third, middle one third as well as the lower one third. Upper one third is close to the pharynx. Okay. We know it. And what is this muzzle? The muzzle through which, this is the muzzle. The muzzle through which the esophagus will go down into the abdominal cavity. What is this muzzle? This is called the diaphragm. We know. This is the diaphragm. Okay. Now down to the diaphragm what happens, esophagus it continues and here there is stomach. Okay. Stomach and it is going to continue as a duodenum. Now what is this, look here. So here in the uppermost area, okay, there is Zenker's diverticulum. Now tell me, Zenker's diverticulum is an example of true diverticulum or false diverticulum? It is a pseudo diverticulum, it is a false. Okay, it's an example of false diverticulum. Or you can have sometime a diverticulum that can originate in the middle of the esophagus. In the middle of the esophagus, you can have a pouch. So these are called as the traction diverticulum. Traction diverticulum. Now, this traction diverticulum, they are going to be seen in which condition? They are associated with conditions. Okay, traction diverticulum is associated with diffuse esophageal spasm. In conditions like diffuse esophageal spasm, the patient can have this, sorry, the patient can have the traction diverticulum and this traction diverticulum is important. They are examples of true diverticulum. 
okay in the conditions like diffuse esophageal spasm as well as mediastinal fibrosis okay so in the mediastinal fibrosis and diff diffuse esophageal spasm the patient can actually develop the traction diverticulum very very important the traction diverticulum are example of the true diverticulum and one more diverticulum the last fellow which is going to come just above the diaphragm this is called as a epiphrenic phrenic you know the phrenic nerve which is innervating the diaphragm see epiphrenic phrenic means the diaphragm here see this epiphrenic diaphragm Sorry, not diaphragm, epiphrenic diverticulum. See, this epiphrenic diverticulum is going to be seen in which condition? This epiphrenic diverticulum, it is associated with gastroesophageal reflux disease as well as achalasia. Okay, see, there are these conditions called as the gastroesophageal reflux disease as well as achalasia cardia. If a patient is having, okay, these two, as a complication of GRD and as a complication of achalasia cardia, the person can develop epiphrenic diverticulum just above the esophagus. Traction diverticulum is going to be seen in diffuse esophageal spasm as well as the mediastinal fibrosis and they are example of the true diverticulum. And you know about the Zengas diverticulum which is originating from the Killian's dehiscence, okay, the weak area between the constrictor muscles, inferior constrictor muscles. Whenever there is more pressure, okay, whenever there is more pressure in that particular weak point, the mucosa and submucosa they will protrude out through that area leading to the formation of this diverticulum. What are the complications? The complications are going to be aspiration with the lung abscess formation. Normal general symptoms are going to be dysphagia with the halitosis, bad breath is going to be there. Investigation of choice is going to be barium swallow and the surgery that can be done is called as a dolmen endoscopic stapling procedure. Okay. So with this, the topic of the esophageal diverticulum are completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.